GitLab. Uh, my name is Max Wolf. I'm a senior backend engineer on the product analytics team, and I want to talk to you all about our sort of latest iteration of how funnels work. And we finally fixed the issue where there was uh, wouldn't let us define a funnel of more than two steps, which is a fairly fundamental problem. So let's share my screen and let's get started. Um, so we've now got an open MR, which we're hoping to get out of draft today, which does three major things. So we're adding support for YAML funnel definitions. Uh, just talk about that in a second. Adding a new API endpoint, um, which exposes the list of funnel definitions to project developers or higher. Uh, and then we update the API endpoint that proxies requests to Cube, the BI tool, uh, which generates temporary project access tokens. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so first of all, we've now got this ability to define funnels in a file, which I talked about briefly in the last video. Uh, this is my test funnel. I've got lots of test data in ClickHouse. That allows us to play with this. So uh, a converted funnel is basically within um, 3,600 seconds. Do we go through page one, page two, page three, all the way through to page seven? Uh, and where in that funnel do people fall off? And how can we visualize that? Um, so I recommend checking out um, little cows documentation. And uh, uh, to find the right function, parametric parametric aggregate function, the window funnel function, uh, which basically handles all the hard work for us here. Um, and our API will send the correct SQL. Um, so first of all, let's talk about what we've added to the code base and how that works. Um, so we've got a few new classes. We've got the funnel class, uh, which is very similar to the dashboard schema class. We have before it loads the files and generates a bunch of um, plain old Ruby objects. Uh, based on that, and then the funnel step uh, defines some nice sort of SQL helpers. Um, so the most important bit is the in the funnel class, we've now got a to SQL method, which generates the ClickHouse specific SQL using the window funnel method. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool and works as advertised, which is very nice. It's very, very fast as well. Um, so let's see it working because that's more, much more interesting. Um, so We've defined this funnel here, which has some useful data. Um, we've also defined uh, a couple new API endpoints, first of which is this one, which will output the list of funnels and the SQL required to um, uh, execute them, essentially. So let's run that one. Let me find here. So here's my list of funnels. Um, you can see the name of it, completed purchase. And you can see the generated SQL here. Uh, and then you can also see a list of steps. So the front end can also just load the list of steps if necessary. If you want to display that in any other way. Here's another funnel as well uh, in the same project, which you can see. If we let list of funnels, you can see there should be two funnels to find here. Uh, the name of the funnel file doesn't really matter. It takes the name from the, the defined name here. Um, so for each of those, cube will generate a dynamic schema. So uh, in the list, in the, the playground, you can see completed purchase. So it takes the name and sort of humanizes the title. Uh, and it generates useful JSON queries here. So you can see completed purchase dot count. And you can see the funnel here nicely. So you can see 235 people made it to step three. 145 made to step five, and there were seven steps and 30 converted. The playground doesn't give us a funnel visualization, so a bar chart is as close as you're going to get. Um, but we can fix that in our front end. So more importantly, um, we'll be using the proxy endpoint that we've got. Uh, and you can pass in the name of the funnel, which is generated dynamically. And you can also pass in either a before date uh, or a, a date range as well. Currently, because of some sort of uh, issue in Cube, we can't do after date at the moment. Uh, we can add that later on, hopefully. But for now, it's either going to be before a certain date or within two dates. So we may just force it to be within two dates for now. Uh, you can run that as every other query. Uh, let's have a look at the response, JSON text. So you can see here, here's the data, step three, step five, step seven. You can see the funnel dropping off as we go along as well. Um, so the biggest thing we had to deal with here was the fact that um, the dynamically generated query 
has to go and call the GitLab API. It has to go and find out from the GitLab API which funnels exist, um, which meant that for the first time, we've got an API query that goes from Cube to GitLab as opposed to the other way around. Obviously, Cube needs to authenticate itself with GitLab to do that. Um, so for this as our first boring solution, um, we've changed the uh, proxy API endpoint to now generate a temporary GitLab token, which is sent to Cube's security context. Uh, this expires the day after it's generated, um, so it won't be long running at all. Uh, but because it's essentially a personal access token, you can't generate it for any less than the following day, because uh, we don't have minute granularity. Uh, for expiration for those tokens. Um, I'm not convinced that this is the best way to do this longer term, but for now, at least it gets us a, a working prototype. Um, we're behind the default our feature flag and uh, requires an ultimate license as well. So I'm not totally, con I'm not particularly concerned about the security implications here, especially because these tokens are never actually displayed anywhere. They're just stored encrypted in the database. Uh, those are then passed to the JWT, which is passed directly to Cube which then uses that token to make uh, an API call to GitLab uh, as a project maintainer. Uh, the other big thing that we fixed in this one, obviously, was the fact that we can now have funnels of completely arbitrary size. Um, so this is a seven step funnel, which works fine. Three step, 100 step, as far as I can tell, will all work. Um, we'll have to test it in anger with like 50 and 60 step and see how well uh, ClickHouse deals with that. Um, and we have to look at pre-aggregation as well. Pre-aggregation in dynamically generated funnels appears to be not working yet, um, but I'm also not sure how necessary it is. So we will have to see. Excellent, just wanted to give a, an overview of where we are so far, where we're going now, uh, and hopefully we can get this uh, MR reviewed and, and into the, into the uh, code base as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.